Luke here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, and I'm about to restore the most beautiful axe I've ever seen. All right, guys, so we're gonna do another axe restoration video here, and this one's really a fun looking axe. It's in really great shape as far as corrosion and pitting is concerned, but it's got some unusual problems with it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Very little rust, almost no pitting, a little bit of like flaking on the surface. Beautiful little maker's mark. But there's some mushrooming on the sides. And there's this. See, so look at this. There's, it looks almost like this was cast rather than forged. And there was like a little bit of a uh, spillover in the process. So, gotta get rid of this. And check this out. See right here? That is not flat. That has got a serious bow in the blade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this thing up in the forge. I'm gonna take a chisel and try to knock this stuff out. And I'm gonna try to bend this flat. And then I'm gonna heat treat it. And uh, we're gonna go from there. So there we go, knocked out the slag inside the hole. Now we gotta straighten it out. All right, we got the blade straightened out, looks pretty good. Now we're gonna heat the whole thing up and heat treat it. Son of a gun, I see what you're doing there. Oh. Yeah, I just melted a hole in the bottom. Ah. Oh, what a mess. Melted a hole right in my bucket. Dumped about four quarts of motor oil on my driveway. Time to go buy some kitty litter. Now that this axe is heat treated, I'm gonna knock off all the scale and carbon and smooth out the scratches get it all polished. Um, a lot of you will be wondering why I'm not tempering it in an oven and that's because tempering is a process used to help soften steel that is too brittle and too hard. Uh, currently I have no reason to believe that that is the case with this steel and if I'm wrong it'll make an interesting video. Son of a gun. All right, so uh, sharpening that axe with the file got me. I was going back and forth and went ting and just hit it right on the tip of my pinky, right on the blade. It got me pretty, pretty deep, but I don't think it needs stitches. I can't see any fat or anything down there. One down, nine to go. <laughs> Sliced my finger pretty darn good on that uh, that axe, so. It's uh, definitely getting pretty sharp. I'm gonna do a little bit more filing and uh, then I've gotta start sharpening it properly with an actual honing stone. But it's getting dark. I still haven't quite stopped bleeding. Let's call it a day for today. Well, it is a cold December day. I'm gonna pick up where I left off when I sliced up my pinky. I am going to keep working on grinding out some of the imperfections in the ax and I'm gonna be putting that bevel in. Well, as you can see, this side looks pretty darn good. I just got a few little spots here and there to grind out, but most of the work needs to be done on this side. 
Well guys, I'm learning from my mistakes. I put some tape on the edge here to keep me from uh, cutting myself again while polishing this thing up. Oh, I burned through a lot of sandpaper. Well, the sun is setting and it's getting late. I think it's a good place to stop for right now. I'm going to start working on the handle and sharpening my ax next. So, still quite a few things to do, but this is turning out really well. So I've got a little problem and I've got my good friend Matt here who's gonna help me fix it. The, uh, the hole in my ax head is too wide for this piece of lumber here, so I need to go and get two pieces and sandwich them together to make a slightly wider handle. Unfortunately, I do not have the tools for that and doing it by hand is a skill I do not possess. So Matt here is going to help me uh, plane them, right? That's a- Join them and plane Join them and plane them. So, and we've got, this piece of zebra wood right here, which we're gonna use for the handle. And then I've got some other pieces uh, that have been sitting around in my, this Murado, and I've got some uh, purple heartwood and stuff that uh, may make a, a cameo in some future videos. So you put a little pencil scribbles on here and then it lets you know any place it didn't get planed? Yep. Sweet, good trick. A zebra wood's cool, isn't it? We've got the two pieces of zebra wood, and you can see they make a nice symmetrical pattern there. It's gonna be very, very pretty. Gonna use some uh, water resistant glue here. Got it all clamped up, plenty of wood glue. We'll give this 24 hours to cure and uh, we'll go from there. It's uh, been about four or five days since I, I put this project down. My wife just had our third child, little Jacob. And I'll put a link in the description if you wanna see some ridiculously cute baby videos. Moving forward, I've got to sketch out the outline of the ax handle and do a lot of cutting and grinding and uh, we're gonna shape this bad boy up and see how it looks. Man, that doesn't look too bad at all, does it? I've got to clean up a little around here, and then I've got to sand this handle down. Then we've got to mount this. All right, got a little spring steel left over from a previous project. I'm gonna really quick forge this into the shape of some wedges to put in the top of the axe handle. Well, there we go, got a little wedge made. And uh, I'm just gonna real quick blue this with a map gas torch.
But there we go, we got the, the wedge blued so it's less likely to corrode. All right, I've got a piece of African mahogany here I'm gonna to use to make a wedge. And I could use a piece of zebra wood, but it's all got this lamination uh, spot in the middle, which make it kind of weak. So I'm just gonna use this piece of African mahogany as a wedge instead. Got the wedge done, nice and thin. I gotta tell you guys, I was glad to be inside. 16 degrees was the high. It was a little nippy out there. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Oh, it is smooth to the touch. It feels like it's lacquered. That 2000 grit sandpaper really puts a polish on it. Now normally this is all I'll do. I'll just slap on some lid seed oil and call it good. And wood will keep really well that way. So you can see here, here's some handles where I've done just that and they look amazing, okay? But this is laminated wood and I'm worried about how weather and rain and stuff might delaminate it. So I'm gonna seal it with polyurethane and put on several coats to try to protect this handle because I really want to use and abuse this. There we go, the zebra wood handle is complete. Now I just need to uh, mount the axe head on it. I did something that got me a little irritated at myself, okay? So normally you put a metal wedge in right there in the middle across the top. I'm really worried about splitting the wood, and so I slid the metal wedge in the back. But it was such a big wedge, it raised it up there. So what I should have done is gotten two smaller wedges and put one in the front and one in the back, and then pounded them in together. It is what it is, but eventually this wedge will probably work itself out eventually. You start to get a little bit loose. When it does, I can pull it out. I can redo it the way I want and it'll be fine. But it it is on there super tight, man. Now, what I wanna do is I want to do some wet forming where you get some leather wet and you mold it around the ax for a very snug contoured sheath. In order to do that, I need to create a spacer because you don't want the sheath to be the exact same size as the hatchet. You want a little gap so that it'll come in and out easily. All right. All right, so I got my ax saran wrapped with a piece of cardboard on the back. I've got a piece of wood here. Now to go soak some leather. All right, get some water and put the leather in it. So after only being in the water for like a minute or two, you can see it's very flexible, pliable, exactly what you want. Okay. All right, there we go. It's actually been a couple days now and the leather's dried up very nicely. You can see here it's hard and it's, it's really formed well to the ax. So we're gonna take the nails off and uh, we're gonna draw the outline of the sheath and get going.
All I got left to do is put this snap on right there, but uh, the snaps I have unfortunately are antique brass instead of shiny brass and they don't really match. So I'm gonna get some shiny brass snaps and in the meantime, I'm gonna dye this thing. It's been a couple days and look at that sheet. This is looking good. Got my snaps in the mail. Just need to drill a hole here, drill a hole here, install the snap, and then I need to coat the outside of this in beeswax to protect it and seal it. We're gonna be good to go. Well, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Man, I am just so pleased with this. That handle is amazing. Look at that mirror finish. And that is awesome. Man, this thing is gorgeous, but can it cut? Let's uh let's go try it out. Ooh. Well guys, this was an awesome project. I just really enjoyed this one and I love how it turned out. There's definitely some things I would do differently. Um, if that wedge ever starts coming out, I am anxious to reset that ax head so it's a little bit more flush and a little bit more proper. But hey, you know, that's, that's part of the fun is learning something new and getting better each time you do it. So definitely, uh, definitely enjoyed this project. It was a ball. I'm proud of that. I really am. Thanks for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more great videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every week. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you'll get notified when we put out another great video.